fact, it looks like a weird dancing man. Right. So what have we got here? Well, uh, we were at the tip um, the other day, or what would they call that in America? The dump? The dump. Yeah, we were at the dump the other day, um, and walked past a guy's car. Now, in England, you're not allowed to take things out of the dump or out of the tip. Um, so once it's gone into one of those big skips, you've got, you know, you can't start diving in there and pulling stuff out. So I walked past this guy's car and I saw this, this chair was basically turned the other way, it was kind of on its back and I noticed it, instantly recognised it as a High Wycombe chair. In England, um, a lot, High Wycombe was kind of the centre for chair making in the UK, kind of probably from about, oh, the mid 19th century up until the kind of Second World War. So. You know, oh, you look at it and you think it's just a piece of rubbish chair. But uh, what I can tell you about this is this is a piece of solid English elm. Let's just show you what that will come up like. So just look at that grain. I mean, look at that. It's absolutely filthy. It's missing a spindle here. So I think what we've got here for a future project is we do have a lathe and we're going to get that set up. This all kind of does tie in together, so stick with us for this one. Uh, these will probably have been made from ash, so what we're going to do at some point as a project is we're going to make and copy one of these spindles on our lathe. And I think what we'll do then is we're going to steam bend it into position. So essentially we'll take this, we'll stick it in the steamer for an hour so that we can kind of bend it so we can fit one end in that socket there and one end up there and then position it so that it kind of comes right. Uh, we can then get a bit of finish on it. So, uh, I think that'll look, and I think it's worth doing it for a nice English chair like this. So what makes this chair special, Mark? What makes it special? Well, Mark? here we go. Let's have a little, let's have a little look here. So, High Wycombe, centre of English chair making. Uh, don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yeah. So there you go. What have you got here? N Ista or Nista, Maker, and can you see Wickham there? Yeah. So that would be the factory where this was made, or the workshop where this was made, and this is probably the guy who made it. Is that IWF? Yeah, it looks like an IWF. IWF, okay. So it's actually signed by whoever made it. You'll find on a lot of English chairs, actually, that it is marked at the back. Uh, and, it, you know, again, it's a, this classic example of it. It's exactly like us, isn't it? We try and mark uh, what we make, but not necessarily in kind of like a really obvious place. You know, we try and tuck it away. So here it is on the back. What's even more interesting than this, and this, this chair just gets more and more interesting, I think, is have a little look at that. Hold on. <laughs> God, the sunshine today. So, George Regina the fifth. So, George the fifth. So, it does date this chair to about uh, 1940s or so. Just pre war, actually. Or just during the war, in fact, isn't it? So, yeah, like from the 30s to the 40s. But I wonder why it's got a royal crest on it. I'm not saying that the king sat on this chair, but what I'm saying is this might have been in a military uh, setting. It might have been a naval setting, God knows. But it's probably a government kind of setting because it's got G, you know, George, well, George V's emblem burnt into the bottom. Cool. Quite crazy, isn't it? Quite nice. Hold on, let's get a close up of that. Sweet. Nice little chair, that, though, isn't it? So, that's going to be a future project. Yeah, we'll just do that up. Get it all, refinish it. Get it cleaned up, refinish it. And flog it. No, keep it. Keep it. Keep it. I know someone who's paid 200 quid for one of them. Oh, the sunshine. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah, aren't we? We're getting ready. It took me off. It took me off topic.